Hey there boys, welcome back to another episode of Low Spec Labs. It's been about a month since I made my last video, uh, at least in regards to Proxmox. I've been working on my Turbo Z project in my free time, and I figured I should get back to this, try and be more consistent with this. So this is uh, a name towards that, All right? So what is a Proxmox cluster? A Proxmox cluster is basically two or more Proxmox nodes that have been joined together in order to share their resources right lots of other virtualization platforms use clustering like uh esxi right esxi uses clustering uh and it's like vspare right um i believe overt uses clustering as well um even aws and azure is basically one giant cluster but their cluster spans geographic regions and it's set up a little bit more complicated than anything we'd ever do in proxmox right there's a lot of benefits to clustering uh, especially when it comes to Proxmox, the first being that you can move VMs between nodes. This is useful in case you want to take a node down in order to do upgrade. Uh, you can share resources between nodes, so you can have like shared storage and you know have the memory and the CPU of a VM basically live on one place and the storage live on another place, right? Uh, there's live migration, so you can move a VM from one node to another node right and not have that vm shut down so no need for you to disable that and clustering also provides high availability so if you have your cluster set up correctly you can shut down a vm move it you know you can move you can basically shut down a node and those vms will move to a, another node automatically and you won't see any service interruptions so clustering can be a very powerful tool for you to manage a virtualized infrastructure right i like to use it in my home lab because i have a couple machines and it's very useful for me to move my lab vms or my personal vms to one machine shut them down toss some ram into the machine that was you know running out of ram or adding some storage to the machine that needed extra storage and spin it back up and go about my business so very useful very powerful should only take us about 10 15 minutes to get this set up so all right and let's get started boys so the very first thing you want to do is log into your freshly created proxmox node in my instance here i am using a proxmox vm right We're running proxmox on proxmox we're getting a little bit of inception here boys look at that so log into the first proxmox node right when you do you'll see a pretty basic setup here go into data center click cluster click create cluster we're going to call this to cluster and we're going to go ahead and click create and we'll wait a few seconds for this to get created All right and then we'll refresh the page and when we do you'll see this little in parentheses here right to cluster basically that means the cluster has been created Right, we have our first node of the cluster made. Pretty straightforward, took a couple clicks, a couple seconds. The next thing you wanna do is click join information and then click copy info right here. And basically it copies this long string to your clipboard. The next thing you wanna do is log into your second node. All right, this is our second Proxmox node here that we also made, PVE Lab 2. Go to Data Center. Go to cluster, click join cluster, right click and paste. And then it's going to ask for your peers root password. What it means by that is it wants the root password of the first node you made. So it wants the root password of PVE lab one. I'm going to go ahead and enter that root password right here and then click join to cluster. We're going to wait a few seconds. It's going to stop the PV cluster service. And then we're going to refresh the web page. And once the web page is refreshed, you should see both clusters active, right? Or both nodes active in the cluster now. And then when we go to summary, it should show us some summary information about the cluster. Ah, looks like I had to renew the SSL cert. So there we go. And now, we have a cluster with two nodes, eight CPUs, and eight gigs of RAM. 
and it sees the storage on both nodes and adds them together and says we have 500 gigs. That's not technically accurate. That's there's a little bit more going on to that number, but it's cool. It's high. It's good looking. So, right. So that's how you join a Proxmox node to a Proxmox cluster using the web interface. The next thing we're going to want to do is, well, join the third node. Since I've already shown you how to join a Proxmox node to a cluster using the web interface, I'm going to show you how to do it via the command line. Proxmox suggests that you SSH into the third node. Since this is on, uh, well, since this is a lab environment, I'm just going to use the console on my original Proxmox host, right? So imagine I'm SSHing in. We log into the third node, right? And in order for us to join this node to the Proxmox cluster via command line, we're going to use pvacm add, and then we're going to enter the IP address of the cluster. So pvacm add. And then in like with the GUI interface, it's going to ask for the root password of that node. So 100101. Oops, let's try that again. So 100101, right, is PVE lab one. So I'm entering the password for that node. It then asks, am I sure I want to continue? I click yes, or I enter yes. And then we wait a few seconds, right? It says waiting for quorum, so it's going to wait for this one to join the cluster. It says OK. It generated some new SSL search for the Proxmox web interface. It says OK. And then we're going to clear that. And then to verify that that third node joined the cluster, I'm just going to go to PVE Lab 2 and check this out. We now have PVE Lab 3 added to the cluster. And then, of course, we'll, re -refre we'll refresh the web interface and check it out. Now we have 12 gigs instead of eight and 733 gigs of storage instead of 500. So it's a pretty straightforward process. It only takes a couple of minutes. Pretty simple to do to make this very easy, especially when you consider uh, I've created ESXi clusters on vSphere. That wasn't very too fun. Uh, I've created overt clusters. That wasn't very too fun. Proxmox is by far the simplest, easiest way. I've joined a node to a clustered you know virtualization environment right so you should appreciate the small stuff guys i'm just being serious here all right so that's it we've got the cluster join now i'm going to show you what you can do once you do have a cluster what are some cool stuff you can do live migration high availability right but uh we'll get back to that real quick i've got to respect these vms real quick all right boys welcome back Right, right. So when we last left, uh, we didn't have any VMs set up on this. I decided to, uh, I decided to go ahead and set up a VM for us to play around with. This is just a regular Debian VM, right? Something that has to be noted is that this Debian VM is using shared storage. So underneath my data center storage, I added a NFS store right here. All right, and this NFS store is mounted to a file server I have on my network. Right, and on that file server, I have a share, and I just shared that. You know, I have a folder, and I just shared out that folder as an NFS share. Right, if you want highly available virtual machines, you're going to need to set up some type of shared storage, whether that's Cluster FS, ZFS, ZFS over iSCSI, iSCSI, SMB, NFS. Of all those options, I'd say NFS is probably the easiest and most stable to set up. So that's what I went ahead and did. Right, and you can go ahead and set up NFS on like uh, an old computer, right? You can grab like a laptop and plug in like a USB drive and share that over NFS on the network, right? There's lots of different things you can do, but it makes it pretty easy to set up. So once you get your share set up, you get it connected by going to add NFS. It's gonna ask for your server ID. So it'd be my server, my share, or whatever you wanna call it. Server would be in my case, my file server is at 10.0.25. It's going to ask you to export your share. Mine does lab share, at least for testing purposes, right? It's going to be called something else for you. After that, you go ahead and you click add. I'm not actually going to add because I already have it added, but when you're done, 
you'll see this NFS share. And of course, it's gonna ask you your file types. So these are basically the different types of files it's gonna hold. I clicked everything because it's gonna hold all the different file types for this lab share. All right. Once you've done that, you can then go into uh, the cluster again. Click your VM. And I just want to show you guys the VM moving from one node to another. All right. So we've got PV Lab 3. Let's go ahead and let's hit migrate on that. And it's going to start the migration. All right. The migration's happening pretty quick. Uh, there you go. It took a couple seconds there. All right, and we're back, and you can see the day VM, VM finished the migration, right? And it's still up. So let's go into there. Let's click this migration log, right? Let's see. Out of downtime. Tunnel still running. Terminate now. Migration finished successfully. So that migration took about 51 seconds to complete. Right. Of course, in the real world, your VM's not going to migrate in 51 seconds. Well, it might if you have the right storage setup. Right. If you have maybe 10 gig Ethernet with uh, SSD arrays, you know, backed up in like a RAID 5 or a RAID 6 array, you might get 10 seconds back up on a very small VM. But otherwise, it should probably take you like 30 minutes to an hour, maybe several hours, depending on how large the VM is. Right. So that's just migrating a VM from one Proxmox node to another just to test the node.